When you're looking for a new home or investment property, why not seek an almost 30-year experienced businessman and real estate professional who loves the cultures of Chicago and understands the Chicagoland housing market? When you choose Ford Desired Real Estate LLC, LaShawn K. Ford will answer all your questions about securing a mortgage and providing valuable information for your purchase. LaShawn's house hunting kit includes a detailed summary of area schools, nearby amenities, and testimonials from homeowners who live in your neighborhood of choice. LaShawn knows this city better than anyone and can expertly consult you on property values. He'll take the pulse of your prospective community by highlighting neighborhood activities and notable facts. To list your property or to start looking for your next investment property, call LaShawn at 773-379-4663. That's Ford Desired Real Estate LLC at 773-379-4663. Well, good morning, y'all. It's uh, another day on what you call Chicago Hill. I'm LaShawn Ford and... <laughs> Malika Gardner. Good morning, Mark Pesakovich here. Well, you guys, it's been a great 2022 so far. And I'm not just saying that, Mark, because we're getting ready to get a black woman to the Supreme Court um, in America. <laughs> Is it Malika Gardner? It's no, that it's not Malika. I don't think she wants that um, job. No, I that's, don't want that's that the, job. But but that's the next nomination. There, you know, I'll second it. But who am I? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would well, actually. I would love to be a Supreme Court judge. I'd be laying now, it down. Woo! Now you you do know uh, Malika that there is no requirement that the, for any kind of particular training or background. You know, so I have learned that. Const- <laughs> so according to the Constitution, you'd be just as qualified as anything. But you know, we're getting ready to talk about the woman who might be like the most qualified ever for the Supreme Court, who's getting beat up by quasi racists, um, and so. Uh, mm-hmm. it's hard to believe, but uh, I'll turn it over to Representative Ford for uh, some background. You know, all right. So how did we get here? I, you know, it, I would say that um, the world and the United States really, I think, owes Joe Biden a great deal of uh, respect for making the nomination. You know, there's been many, many nominees, and no one has come as close as Judge Brown. And this is how we got here. Choosing someone to serve on the United States Supreme Court is one of the most serious constitutional responsibility a president has, and I mean it. I promised the process would be rigorous, that I would select a nominee worthy of Justice Breyer's legacy of excellence and decency. Someone extremely qualified, with a brilliant legal mind, with the utmost character and integrity, which are equally as important. If I am fortunate enough to be confirmed as the next Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, I can only hope that my life and career, my love of this country and the Constitution, and my commitment to upholding the rule of law and the sacred principles upon which this great nation was founded will inspire future generations of Americans. You know, Malika, I got to tell you, when I listened to Judge Jackson, just then, honestly, I got chills in my body. I mean, just a magnificent, qualified woman. Not black Mm -hmm. woman. She's black, but she's qualified. Let me just run. Qualified human. A qualified Qualified human. human. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So, I mean, let me run down something. So Judge Jackson's path to the Supreme Court, we owe it to her and her family and how she became who she is. But there are many judges, and I think I showed this to y'all, but Judge Jackson, they did this scale of previous judges, and they used a box, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes. 
to show how qualified she was and how she stands totally apart from every judge on the bench today. Mm. Judge Jackson checks all the boxes. So here they are. Public high school, Judge Jackson, yes. Ivy League Law School, Judge Jackson, yes. During her career, Supreme Court clerk, Judge Jackson, yes. Public defender, Judge Jackson, yes. Sentencing commission, Judge Jackson, yes. District judge, Judge Jackson, yes. Court of the Appeals Court, Judge Jackson, yes. The only person to even come close to Judge Jackson's check boxes was Breyer, Judge Breyer. He checked off one, two, three, four, five, while Judge Jackson checked off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thomas only checked off two. Judge Thomas only checked off two. Judge Roberts only checked off three. Judge Alito only checked off three. Judge Sotomayor only checked off three. Judge Kagan only checked off three. Gorsuch only checked off three. And Kavanaugh only checked off three. What in the world? She's checked. She's, I mean, she's the best. But yet challenged so hard. That that was, I, it was painful to watch. It was painful to watch. But she held her own. She held her own. So I'm really ambivalent about this one, guys. Um, here's the question. To, to what degree did she get picked on for being a black woman mm. or black or a woman, depending on which you know, white guy was talking down to her. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, he, and, and I'm particularly interested on Representative Ford's um, views here because he is a politician. And so, um, it, and he's a politician who actually went to the opera yesterday. And so I wanted to say, I, you know, if you think about it, wouldn't you say there are certain um, aspects of performance to these hearings. I mean, these are not genuine things motivated by thoughtfulness. It's an opera. In fact, scripted opera because everybody reads for the script. And so you knew there was going to be this conflict no matter who came in. The Republicans generally beat up on the Democrats. The Democrats generally beat up on the Republicans to more or great, lesser or greater degree. But even the ones who didn't rape anyone, you know, the Democrats do find, um, you know, uh, things to to, to, to pick apart there. And so sort of when, when, when the bears play the lions, we don't say, well, the lions are racist because they're beating up on the bears or the other way around. And so this is what I've been struggling with. How much of this, and by the way, whatever it is, the American people deserve better. Um, uh, and clarify that. Deserve better what? Deserve a better dialogue. D yeah. Deserve a, a more thoughtful, honest dialogue about real things rather than, you know, uh, racial or uh, critical race theory and, and just stuff. It was sort of like garbage that was swept in from the papers from the last 30 years and all the garbage got picked up and she got, you know, beat up all over. I mean, this is amazing because... Clearly, these people could not find a thing, a thing, a single one thing in her background that really gave them concern, that they could really criticize, that would give the American people pause. And so they they brought up these grievances and BS that are historic that, you know, they might as well talked about the Emancipation Proclamation and how that hurt South Carolina. That's where Lindsey Graham should have started is, well, you took away our slaves. That was our, my first grievance. Um, but again, how much of it is about the Black woman and how much of it is sort of the disgusting level of political gamesmanship, which seems to me even worse in Washington than it is in Springfield, let's say. Well, you know, Mark, that, I think that we have to ask ourselves that question and be honest about it. And that's a good question. And for the most part, Democrats are going to be 
opposite of Republicans because of their beliefs and philosophies and vice versa. You know, the Republicans nominated and confirmed a person that thinks like them, but he doesn't look like them. And you know who that person is. And so it's not always about color. It's about who we could get in the party to think like us and rule the way we want them to rule. So mm -hmm. there is a black man on the Supreme Court right now named Judge Thomas. I mean, mm -hmm. he made it, but he thinks like the Republicans and he will make his um, dissents like the Republicans. So I would say that going into the hearings, Judge Jackson knew that there would be partisan bickering. But the process is set up for that. And so it's, it, it puts her on the platform to perform. And she performed. And she showed that she's able to think critically and also maintain the philosophies that a President Biden was looking for. And so Republicans and Democrats see things different. You know, watch. We're going to hear how Mitch McConnell, the one that said black people are not Americans. What did he say? The Judiciary Committee has completed its hearing for Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson. I enjoyed meeting the nominee. I went into the Senate's process with an open mind. But after studying the nominee's record and watching her performance this week, I cannot and will not support Judge Jackson for a lifetime appointment to the Supreme Court. First, Judge Jackson refuses to reject the fringe position that Democrats should try to pack the Supreme Court. Justice Ginsburg and Justice Breyer had no problem denouncing this unpopular view and defending their institution. I assumed this would be an easy softball for Judge Jackson, but it wasn't. The nominees suggested there are two legitimate sides to the issue. She testified she has a view on the matter, but would not share it. She inaccurately compared her non-answer to a different, narrower question that a prior nominee was asked. But Judge Jackson seem seemingly actually tipped her hand. She said she would be, quote, thrilled to be one of however many, however many. The opposite of Ginsburg and Breyer sentiment. The most radical pro-court packing fringe groups badly wanted this nominee for this vacancy. Judge Jackson was the court packer's pick, and she testified like it. Second. For decades, activist judges have hurt the country by trying to make policy from the bench. This has made judicial philosophy a key qualification. Please make this stop. That it's killing me. Must consider. <laughs> it's painful. President Biden stated he would only appoint a Supreme Court justice. That wasn't even the clip that that I was really wanting to see when he was just. Oh my God. Hmm. Well, I think that it's just. That's painful. It mm. is painful. But it's a pro part of the process. And what's important about this is she sees different than him. Thank God. And so you have to put this man on the, on the forefront to show how he thinks so that people could take sides and understand why it's so important to have a Judge Jackson and a President Biden make an appointment like that instead of having a Donald Trump making appointments that would think opposite of what a Judge Jackson thinks. This is, we have to show how America could go in one direction 
or it could go in another direction. Which direction do you want to go? Do you want to go in in um, President Biden's direction with a Judge Jackson, or do you want to go in a Judge uh, President Bush? I think it was uh, who, who nominated um, Judge um, the the black judge on the bench. Uh, who Clarence nominated Thomas? Uh, Judge Thomas? Was it Tom, was it Bush? Who? Which direction do you want to go? Mm. Mm. I mean, are we going to be better with a Judge Jackson than another yes. Clarence yes. Thomas? There yeah. it is. We're better with different views and different diversity. But here's the problem is, is that I, I'm not necessarily going to say that about some of the other judges who have recently joined the court because the diversity there is not the kind of diversity uh, that I appreciate. Um, but here, here's my more central question, and maybe this is not the question. Maybe I missed the point of this conversation, and if so, steer me in the right direction. But what's really interesting to me here is, I, because Representative Ford, I think you're being a good politician. You are, you know, saying yes, we need different views. Is this the direction we would want to go? And and the answer is yes. And I think the direct, you know, the answer, I mean, you put a Judge Jackson, uh, you know, uh, up uh, against a Judge Kavanaugh, you know, my team's drafting Jackson, <laughs> you know, first, if we get the first pick, that's who's coming over. So there's no sort of comparison about merit or reputation or the depth of concern or anything like that. So, but to me, the basic question is, is, is that, is this an issue where uh, this snake, um, I don't even know, the by, by the scientific name, Michicus Mechanicus, um, <laughs> uh, would have sounded, you know, would have been hissing any different if it were a white nominee, a white uh, liberal yeah, nominee? Absolutely, he would, you know, because, you know, if, you are not going to opine to their philosophies and beliefs. They don't want you. As I said, they went ahead and they confirmed the judge Thomas because he doesn't think like um, the Democrats. He doesn't think like a liberal. He doesn't think about how um, America should be uh, more um, free and open to everyone. I mean, I would be afraid of Judge Jackson actually ruling on slavery. That you know, it would have been bad to have a Judge Jackson because we know what he believes in. So there's you mean nothing Judge more. Thomas. You Judge, mean Judge, Judge Thomas. Thomas. Clarence. I'm sorry. Thank you, Malika. Don't, you know what? I mean, <laughs> what they all look alike to you? No, oh, you know what I mean. And, but <laughs> let me tell you, elections matter. That's why Senator McConnell is the minority leader. That's. Elections matter. People remember we got the vote because because we have elected and we have the majority in the Senate. We will nominate and we will confirm Judge Jackson if the election was different. Guess what? We would have the Judge McConnell as the president of the Senate and there would be no confirmation of a Judge Jackson. And so I'm fine with Republicans finding reasons not to vote for liberals. That's what they're supposed to do. That's why we have to go out and vote and make sure that we elect Democrats so that we can have a more fair society. So here's another reason why they said they didn't want to vote for her. You got another senator, a woman, asking a question. Uh, can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? Mm, not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. The meaning of the word woman is so <laughs> unclear and controversial that you can't that was a give setup. me a definition. <laughs> that was a setup question. Senator, in my work <laughs> as a judge, what I do is I address disputes. If there's a dispute about a definition, people make arguments and I look at the right. law and I decide. Well, so I'm not. The fact that you can't give me a straight answer 
about something as fundamental as what a woman is underscores the dangers of the kind of progressive education that we are hearing about. Just last week, an entire generation of young girls watched as our taxpayer-funded institutions permitted a biological man to compete and beat a biological woman in the NCAA swimming championships. What message do you think this sends to girls who aspire to compete and win in sports at the highest levels? Senator, I'm not sure what message that sends. If, if you're asking me about the legal issues related to it, um, those are topics that are being hotly discussed, as you say, and I, could come to the court. So I'm and not able to. I think it tells our girls that their voices don't matter. I think it tells them that they're second class citizens and parents want to have a Supreme Court justice who is committed to preserving parental autonomy and protecting our nation's oh, children. Lord. So I, um, let's Stop, know. it's killing me. <laughs> killing us. She's, so asked, should be like, she's pretty much this, asking her to make a decision now well, when that should, case does come to the Supreme Court. <laughs> make the decision it's, it's, now. That's right, <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's, she's setting it's, her up. It was a setup. I thought this was really damaging, though. Uh, and I'll tell you why. I thought this was actually much more damaging um, than the Mitch McConnell piece. Um, because I believe that this speaks to black conservatives um, in a way where they might, you know, shake their head in agreement with with the snake. Uh, and um, uh, that hurts me. That, that, that hurts me that there are going to be preachers who are... Um, in the black community uh, who are going to be uh, on the side of the more conservative view here. Uh, I've heard those views expressed. And here's why. One of the things that most delights me about this going on right now is that black people are really, really tuned in as central stakeholders in a show that's usually around them, but not about them. I think this will help a certain uh, community of folks be much more interested in politics and to understand, like you said, Representative, why they need to vote next time, why this is so critical. And so I think for the Democrats, in a way, this motivates a, con a constituency in a way that may not have come out to a vote for an old white guy again, if that's what it comes to, or, you know, for whatever. So I thought that was critical. I thought this is going to activate an important part of the electorate, whichever way they vote even. But, right. but this here sort of pushes back against that because I, I feel like it takes away something from, I mean, wrongly, needlessly, and it shouldn't because she's giving the same answer as anybody would that's up uh, there. But I just feel like it was, um, they saw the weakness, they ambushed, they exploited it. Yeah. You know, Maliki, we talked about this mm. previously on other shows about gender. How did you feel? Because I got my perspective too. Well, I thought she handled it well because it, they're not up for it. It's not a case that's with the Supreme Court right now. So she's not going to talk what side, what she thinks a woman is. That was It was a setup because the transgender community would come after her if she defined what a woman is. It, yeah. it, it, would, it would bring a whole community against her. And it, it was totally a setup because there's so many transgender discussions going on. I mean to the point one had a baby and they got upset that the nurses congratulated they, him, her, and said, you know, congratulations, you're a new mom. And then they didn't want to be called a mom, you know? No. So you have all these things coming up with, with it was a setup. It was a setup. Oh. So no matter what she said, it was going to be, she was damned if she did, damned if she didn't. But I think she handled it well because she was like, look, it's not a case right now. And I'm not going to tell you what a woman is. See, Malika, because it hasn't been brought to me yet. 
<laughs> You're right. Let me see. This is another example of the Republicans having a right to do this. That's what these confirmation hearings are about. I don't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. I think they caught her off guard with that question. I think that one caught her off guard. And you know what? I think she did handle it well, as you said, Malika, because in her mind, she knew that this wasn't about women. In a sense, she knew that this was about the movement in America and cases are, that are being heard across America, bills that are being passed in every state legislature across this country, or bills that's introduced about gender identity. She knew, she was in her legal mind as a judge, and as you said, Malika, you nailed it. You said she was not gonna allow this senator to allow for her to make the decision at that hearing about defining a woman. That was, that's it, Malika. I think you, that, that, that sums that up, that she wasn't going to be put in a corner and make her decision about that at that hearing. And she mm -hmm. did a good job. And yeah, because anyone else would have jumped up and be like, well, a woman is, yeah. you know, it, and it just would have been the nail in her cop. It would have been it would have been over for her. Yeah. And she answered that question. And and, and she could have answered it, of course. But mm -hmm. I think your understanding about that process is on the money. Making an answer that day was her answer for any ruling that came to the Supreme Court, because the, the question is coming to the Supreme Court and she knows it. And, mm -hmm. um, but you know, she also is a fantastic woman that has some things to say as well. Let's hear her. My daughters, Talia and Layla. Girls, I know it has not been easy as I've tried to navigate the challenges of juggling my career and motherhood. And I fully admit that I did not always get the balance right. But I hope that you've seen that with hard work, determination, and love, it can be done. Belika, I tell you, this is a, a proud day for America. And I appreciate, Mark, what you're saying. It's not just about Black people. This is about America. And this is a value add. And um, her daughter was just as cute as could be looking at <laughs> her mommy on the stands. Did you guys see her? Yeah, she looks so proud. Like, yep, that's my mom. It's that a, is my mom. That reminds <laughs> me of a certain young lady by the name of Tia Ford and the way she looks at her dad. Did, did she look did she look at me like that? All yeah, right. When, yeah, she when, did. when we were at that event, that's what yeah. you know, that's yeah. what her speech introducing you was all about. Was just wow. that that look. It she put words mm -hmm. to the look. Well, I appreciate it. you know, I gotta give you credit. I don't like to give you credit too often, Mark. But it was your idea that Tia introduced me at that um, event. And I um, I think it changed her life. Everything changes her can life, I, right? Can, no matter what. Can I just say, and, you know, maybe this is a different conversation, but as long as we're on politics, you know how there's a lot of white people who generationally hand down their legislative seat to their son or their son-in-law or their daughter, uh, and you notice I added daughter in there, so we'll just leave it there. And and I said white people, but you know it's it's not necessarily it doesn't have to be exclusively white thing. We'll let you in. Uh, we'll let me we, in. We, you we, know, we, we, we can talk about it another time. I got to tell you, that's mighty white of you. I got to <laughs> tell you, uh, you know. And um, but it it was such a it was a, such a, a a great opportunity to have her um do that. And I'll look at the pictures to see if she looked at me like um, Judge Jackson's daughter. So that was beautiful. And I think that <laughs> that's a example that men and women, whether you're a mother, father, grandmother, aunt or uncle, they're looking at us. And yeah. we should give them moments to be proud of us. Many times as adults, we always want to act as though we have to be proud of them. 
what's wrong with them being proud of us? They are watching. They are watching. They remember everything you do and say. <laughs> so, all right, so, so you're saying they remember everything you do and say. So you're saying uh, uh, Will uh, Smith's son and daughter is going to remember him in the oh, 2022 um, uh, Oscars going to the stage and just slapping um, Chris Rock? Wow, I feel like this is totally on the other end. Of, we were just talking about sort of the, the best of us. Yes, that's a that's like a whiplash transition. Well, you know that's the way it goes. We, you know, we're in Chicago, and and you know, in one day, you can have three seasons. So this show is Chicago Hill, and we got another season right now. Just like that. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. You know, I'll say for. Uh, Can Jane you guys Lula. talk about for a second about like set the stage what this is about? Because like I'm not sure all white people will have seen it and with the same. Oh yeah, it's so I mean the Oscars. Oh, it's the Oscars. Oscars. And, and I'm just well, <laughs> just just as an and I'm just joking because it's not white people, but it's people who are not interested in a, in the Oscars, such as myself. I had no idea about any of this until you guys brought me up to speak. Oh, so I mean, oh, until this, I text you at one o'clock in the morning. Uh, yeah, so. yeah. I mean, you know, there's some of us are oblivious to this. We're much more interested in the Senate <laughs> hearings than in the Os like if we could get the judge on the Oscars and give her an Oscar for her performance that I'd like. But I'll, yeah, no. I mean, the best person to give us the setup for the Oscars 2022 is Malika, L.A. Malika. Uh, yeah. Yes, the Oscars used to actually take place not far from where I, I I lived. I've always wanted to go to the Oscars, but then, you know, after a while, I was like, they're not giving awards to people that I want to win. So then I kind of lost interest in the Oscars. But the 2022 Oscars was one that I have never seen happen. I don't think anyone has seen happen, but Will Smith, who was nominated, he actually won. He got up on stage because he was upset at a joke that Chris Rock had said about Jada. And um, I don't think anyone knew Jada had alopecia. Did, did anyone know that? I knew it, but, I, but you know. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't know that even she had I knew alopecia. It. Yeah, I didn't know that she had alopecia. Um, I mean, she's, she's just a, a stunning woman, super talented. I don't think anyone was like thinking that when Chris Rock was telling the joke about her being the next G.I. Jane number two, uh, comparing her to Demi Moore. And, you know, Demi Moore also beautiful, shaved her head for the role. So, you know, I don't think anyone was thinking Chris Rock was attacking Jada in any way. I mean, he's, he's a comedian. He was thinking about the movie. A bald woman. That's the part of G.I. Jane. Well, and she rolled her um, eyes. I mean, Jada was, you know, relative, like, oh, sure, you did a funny joke at my expense. Let's move on. You know, D didn't seem to have I mean, deeply Will hurt Smith her. Laughed. Will Smith laughed at the joke. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, it, everyone was laughing. I don't think anyone was thinking, oh, Chris Rock is being mean. You know, no, everyone was laughing. He was moving on to the to the next joke. And next thing you know, Chris uh, Will Smith gets up gets up on stage and he smacks him like when has that ever happened in the oscars or so now know, there'll have to be happens at other award shows but not now there'll have the to oscars. be sorry malik i was gonna say now you know what's gonna happen now is they're gonna post security guards at this entrance to the stage well there was just 2016 i believe will and and his wife jada they were protesting the Oscars because not many black people were nominated. Not many black people uh, were uh, winners at the Oscars. Winners. And uh, we had some very good talent. But it would go down in history as one of those moments that no one should be proud of. And children mm -mm. were watching. And they wouldn't be proud I think I think his kids would see it as because we were talking about parents, um, kids watching and, you know, remembering everything that parents do and say, you know, on the one hand, they were probably thinking, oh, dad was looking out for mom. But on the 
other hand, it's like I I pray to God that they don't think that they can get away with that. That's a good. They point. themselves can get away with that. That's not He'll how you handle things, it. right? I mean, right. That's not how you handle things. And then double down when he sat down and said, "That's right. I just slapped you. Keep my right. he said, wife. keep my wife's mouth out of your keeps my wife keep my wife's name out of your mouth." That was so uncalled for. The question is. If 50 Cent, the rapper 50 Cent, was the host and he told the same joke, do you think Will Smith would have got up there and slapped 50 Cent? No. He may have cursed him out from his seat, though, but I don't think he would have got up there and, and smacked 50 Cent. That The show would have ended. What, what about, uh, <laughs> yeah, because 50 Cent wouldn't have just left it there. I actually thought one of the best people who handled it was Chris Rock. He was. Um, uh, and, and I, you know, uh, as much as sort of you want to, we want to talk about Will Smith and go like, dude, what happened? There's also the, you know, Chris Rock, good job. You know what? Uh, it's a joke. Jokes are sometimes offensive. Most people laughed. Uh, and the way you dealt with that thing was pretty gracious um, and uh, good on you. Yeah, but what he happens was very now? Classy. I mean, he didn't because that could have been a brawl on the stage. They would have had to go for a break. And well, I'll like, tell you what, though, it would have gotten huge ratings. <laughs> so let's say that um, a white comedian also that was of the same body structure as Chris Rock had told the same joke. Would Will Smith have slapped? The white comedian. I think he would have. I'm not. But he would have been arrested oh, not, last night. I'm not sure. I was <laughs> going to say one of the main things is that if it happened to a white comedian, unlike Chris uh, Rock, uh, the white comedian would have pressed charges. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I think that's probably more likely. But would he have done it? I think uh, familiarity breeds contempt. Okay. That's and, exactly and, right. And and I don't I don't know if. Uh, Chris or uh, Will Smith would have felt that same level of, you know, unfortunately sort of looking at your like as family uh, brings in the same dysfunction as family, right? We're not always just loving toward our families either. Um, and, and, you know, the, the person who's hit me the most in the world is my older brother, you right. know, my family. So, I just think that um, I, I think that it would have been very different if it would. I, I just think it would have been a much bigger deal if it was a white person. Yeah, I don't think he would have slapped Jimmy Kimmel at all. He would have he would have just sat back and probably been upset, and um, and that would have been it. And he probably would have said something later on. But the question now that I ask you all. But wait, don't you think like with him being sort of familiar with Chris Rock, they're probably friends or were friends. He would have waited till after the show, maybe like talk to him backstage or at the after party. Like, dude, why you, you know, you know, my wife has help you. Why are you coming at her like that? This, this ain't a good time. You know, our family, their family has been through so much well, with all the stuff about Jada over the past couple of years. And, and I think it's embarrassed Will a lot. So I felt like he was at a breaking point he, mentally, emotionally. You, you're right. And he just snapped he last snap, night. But guess what? Guess who put all their business in the street anyway? The Red Table. Nobody knew about all of their the entanglement drama. Nobody knew about it. So there's a, a joke on national TV about a show that's coming up that actually Jada with her look could actually play the role. Mm -hmm. And that's what that was about. And so I don't see where the damage was. It was a great I opportunity to promote the movie and to say, look, Hollywood, you missed the opportunity to get this black woman as the star of the show. Why look at her? She looks like she could play the role. That's the way Chris Rock thinks. And so it was pretty bad of, of this guy, Will Smith, to do that with children watching 
going down in history as one of the worst Oscars ever. Even yeah. after he won, he said, you know what? Love can make you do some crazy things. And I don't know how much love that was as much as it was trying to be Mancho out there. And uh, because he should have. I think it was love. Yeah. I think it was I think it was love. I think um, their relationship has really been put out there. I don't think he wanted all that stuff at the red table to come out about his marriage. Who put it out? But once it. I I think Jada. Right. That's her show. So he's the one who put out their <laughs> stuff. So what Will Smith did and what Chris Rock said, you know, Chris Rock didn't say anything worse than what Will Jada Smith has said about people as a comedian. Right. <laughs> so I don't get it. What's I think it was it, it was, it was, I think it was love. I think that family has been taking so many hits and, and it all started because of Jada, um, as far as their marriage, their personal intimacies and, and things like that. And, and he's had to, I don't, that one red, red table talk, he was crying. I mean, he looked like he had been through the ringer to even have to sit at that table and discuss it. So at this point now he's like on the defense. He's, he's, it almost seems like he has somewhat of an emotional mental break with all of that. And we, we all know Will Smith. I, I've met him a couple of times. He is like one of the nicest men. You would never in a million years think he would do anything like that. Like I couldn't even imagine him in a fight at all, you know? And for him to do that last night, to me, it looked like some sort of well, emotional, you, well, you can make excuses. Break. You can make excuses <laughs> for him, but I think that he's strong enough to know better. He made the decision. He thought about it, and he said, "I'm getting ready to go up there. I'm getting ready to slap him." And after he slapped him, he did what? He fixed his suit and he walked back and he crossed his legs and he said, "Yeah." So. He did this. That looked because, like a crazy person to me. You know what? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to even put that in a category of a crazy person because crazy people, I'm sorry, I'm not going to even put that in a category of people struggling with weak mental health because I'm going to put that in a category of a person that was making a decision to do something and he did it and he was proud of it. Now, will he be proud of it later? Because now my question to you all is, what are the legal backlashes now? Will there be legal backlashes? Because there were no physical backlashes. Will will be banned from all Oscars. Will um, Chris Rock sue him? Will the Oscars it. sue him? Chris Rock won't soon. Chris Rock already uh, declined to press charges or file a police report. So Chris That's Rock's family. being really gracious about this. That's part of what I was talking about. There isn't going to be any law consequences, uh, you know, unless Chris Rock obviously changes his mind uh, or, you know, sustained permanent damage that's going to come out uh, medically. But I think, again, to me, the, um, the, well, so, Chris Rock took the opportunity to look good. Um, and what I really am sad about for Will Smith is, is, and I'm sitting here thinking, like, where would I have gone and what I ha would have done? And um, I, you know, I think that maybe, and I don't know, you know, who knows? Because it was it, mentally ill or not, it was a heat of the moment kind of a, a, a thing. And I will give you that. Now, it, was it premeditated? Yes, because it didn't happen, you know, within the uh, mini second of the guy uh, saying it. I mean, so Will had to sit there, think about it, walk up there, do what he did and, and go back. But I do believe it was sort of a crime of passion. But I think, it, you know, really what Will could have done that would have been great is he, he should have talked about how much he loves his wife. He should have talked about what a beautiful human being she is. Um, and, and I think that would have been a much more powerful um, 
thing to do. In yeah, fact, I mean, you know, you know if, you wanna hurt, if you want to hurt, if you want to hurt Chris Rock, come up there and you know, or go out to the media later on. I mean, heck, what does Will Smith have to do to respond? He can send out a tweet, and it'll be on the front pages of every paper the next right. day. So it's not like he doesn't have a platform. So yeah. I think he missed an opportunity to 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 be the loving husband. I think he really was trying to be in 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 that mm. moment. Um, so I I just think you know these are the consequences, and in some ways they are. Um, I think educational for young people, not just young people of color, but all people of color. That's right. Uh, you know, it sort of goes to what I like to say when I close these shows, don't be stupid. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, 30 seconds of stupidity, as you're saying, Representative Ford, could deeply affect the rest of your life. Yeah. And that's, right. that's what's going to play out for Will Smith. This will never be, you know, when we write, when his obituary is written, it's going to be very difficult not to include this little piece in there, or at least his history, if not his obituary. So I feel bad for Will Smith. I feel bad for Jada because she sort of, um, you know, is the focus here really for, you know, a stupid reason. Um, and, and, but, you know, and I, and I'm, and I like the fact that I already like Chris Rock. This makes me feel good about making that choice about liking him as a human. Yes, he, he handled it very well. I, I get the feeling Will Smith will issue an apology, a public apology. I, I really do. I, I think he will. Um, I, I am curious as far as legal, uh, if the Oscars will press charges or do anything. We know Chris Rock won't. He's not that type of person uh, to do that. Um yeah, I'm, I'm wondering what will happen. But, I mean, Will Smith is worth, what, $250 million? Or more. <laughs> or more. He'll, you know, if anything comes up, he'll, he could pay his way out of this and and people will forget about this. He's not well, going to be hurt. Make sure it's buried. Yeah. They won't forget about it. If I'm going to tell you what I, what I think. There should be consequences for his actions, period. I mean, th- this should not go by and he doesn't, pay the cost for doing that. That's national TV. And for me, I got to say, he represents black people. Even though, um, you know, it's that just, I don't, I don't like it. So when kids see people do things and they have to know that there are consequences to your actions. That's what I say all the time about the crime in Chicago. I believe that people If you break the law, if you kill someone, if you rob someone, you need to pay the price. It's not about being tough on crime. It's about having rules that you have to follow. And if you don't follow them, you have to pay the price. And I'll tell you, uh, Mark, one of the statements that you made, I concur. This is a teachable moment for all people that you and 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 the model of the teachable moment was Chris Rock. He could have dug in and went after Will Smith. He could have said nasty things about him, but the fact that he just took the punch and let it go He laid it in the road and let it be. It's over for him. He looks good. Imagine if he had reacted in a negative way. It would have been bad. And I say that only to all of our friends and listeners. There's always going to be opportunities for us to retaliate and think that we want to win and not let someone get the best of us. They hurt my family. I'm going to go shoot them. That's what this is all about. This is, this is almost a perfect sort of reenactment or capture of black on black violence where one guy says something uh, impolite about the other guy's uh, mama on social media. And the other guy goes and kills him because now he's defending his mama. 
Yep. And this stuff was playing out all it, and it, you know, it's almost like it was, if the Ku Klux Klan would have set this up, that would have made sense to me. Okay. Right. Cause that's what a lot of black on black violence is. Yeah. But to me, this characterization of a public insult answered, responded to by violence is really something that encapsulates the problem that we have as a society, not just black people, but but it's black people especially, because it's usually black people killing black or brown people, brown people, you know. So the thing is, is... is uh, hey, wait it, now. It, you got white people going shooting up schools too now. They're killing up... They're oh, just believe me. Uh, uh, you uh, know, uh, white people killing up people, and you guys do it in, in mass numbers. So uh, absolutely, but but uh, again, I think. Well, I'd be curious. Uh, do you know the statistic, uh, Mr. Chairman of the State Violence Prevention Task Force? Um, how many black people are killed by black people, and how many people black people are killed by white people? Is there any? Yeah, the majority. Kind of count on that? Oh, so now you want to play the race card, huh? You know, you see this. He, he's like, okay, hey, you I'm want ratings or what? You want ratings? Well, if you. If you really want to go there, uh, the black on black gun violence in Chicago, where does it root? Where does it stem from? White people. White I told. People. Well, I mean, look, but that's what I said from the beginning. This They're is over like, all of it. This this is this is a systemic thing, and I'm telling you, it's doing the job of the Ku Klux Klan. This is why that's I'm right. saying that. Yes, it is because no, it is. it's not an accident. So, guess what would have happened. I'm just saying this is your this is such a great example for the world to see play out in a way no one died. But if we could use the Will Smith and the uh, Chris Rock model, we are going to be a safer society. It happened, someone hurt your wife, someone hurt your daughter. You know, the ultimate thing is for you to come out on top. Chris Rock came out on top last night. He left Will Smith wallowing in his doo-doo. And so do you want to let the criminals wallow in their doo-doo or do you want to become a criminal too? Because the law could catch them. But you don't want to become a criminal. But I got to ask the question, though. We know that we have praised Chris Rock. But does he look like a man? Does he look strong in the eyes of, of other women, Malika? Let me ask you. Does he look, <laughs> do, do you want a man like Will that's going to go slap somebody to defend you? Or do you want a man that's coming home to you that just got slapped by Will and you saying you let him slap you? That whole thing, I got to tell you, it reminds me of a Dave Chappelle skit. But yeah. uh, it, one in particular, the one with Prince and Prince is slapping people. In, in any case, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's just uh, ridiculous. As a woman, I see Chris Rock as, oh, that's my man. Like, especially if they know each other. And and Chris Rock probably knows some things. I don't know. No, let's but say he, they don't know him. Don't okay, know if if he didn't know him, that's what happened. I I don't like I don't like it when 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 I was younger when my men would get into fights. It would scare me to death because it would scare me to death thinking he might get hurt or hurt the other person and he gets put in handcuffs. I mean, I've seen it happen. You know, it's 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 hard on a woman my type of woman. There are yes. some women who think totally different than me, but my type of woman, I rather my man talk his way out of it, walk away from it. Do not put the family in jeopardy of you going to jail or getting killed. Just walk away from it. Uh, as far as Will Smith, I know he, you know, I, I think it was some sort of mental break, but he's saying that it was out of love and protection of his woman. Um, he could have handled it differently. He could have done it backstage. <laughs> He could have waited at the after party or, you know, call Chris up and, and had a conversation that well, would have been better. But um, or just tweeted Malika. Yeah, Chris that, Rock was better. 
or, or just What's tweeted, man? or just tweeted that he had a, a he won the Oscar and had the better looking wife, and you know left it at that <laughs> oh, or something. You know, it good. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Chris Rock doesn't have a wife anymore. I, no. well, yeah, like it, at least yeah. I still have mine. <laughs> or yeah. whatever, right? But I don't know. at least <laughs> yeah, at he, least I have a wife you can talk about. Um, so yeah, mm-hmm. I mean it's it's funny, but it's. But it's really sad too, and, and it's really and you sad. know, and, and Will Smith is usually good at the comebacks, the comedic comebacks. So I'm really surprised he didn't take it there, like like you said, like make jokes about him not having a wife, Chris Rock not having a wife, or you know, it, it could have been so many other ways so, to respond other than violence, other than what he did. Well, That's why I think it was some sort of mental break. And I'll tell you, uh, I, this just sort of brings me full circle to where we started today because there was another person we didn't mention when we were talking about Judge Brown that we absolutely should have mentioned, and that's Senator Cory Booker, who looked absolutely presidential uh, in that moment when he brought uh, tears, I would say, of comfort and joy to the judge's face at a time when she was just being beaten down by these, can I say assholes? I just did. Um, uh, so, you know, juxtapose, so, you you know, I believe that it's great because this week generated two models of behavior that we as humans and and black people as, as a community can be really proud of. One is Cory Booker and the other one's Chris Rock. They did the right thing in very different ways, but they both Mm -hmm. showed empathy, depth of feeling, concern. And I think they both recognize the power of their actions. Hello. And and so let's make sure that is powerful. And they were black men because black men are many times seen as though they can't perform in those types of capacities. That is black excellence. Well, this has been another episode of Chicago Hill and Chicago. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. There's a new day. We have a new norm and we have to wake up. Uh, Malika? Control your emotions because it in just a millisecond, it could change your life. Think before you act. I should steal Mark's line. Don't be stupid. How you like that? <laughs> Absolutely, I, I like it. I think it better because it's better coming from you. Oh, uh, but um, I, I would just say, yeah, th- think about the long, think about the long game. Play the long game. Yeah, play the long game. Mm-hmm. That's a great way to um, end Ebony and Ivory, and we look forward to talking again soon. <laughs> All right. <laughs>